previously uh, in the year 12 advanced course, I don't have like the trailer voice uh, to read this kind of thing. I want you to think back to when we were doing areas under curves right at the start and we looked at how you can actually do some pretty interesting looking areas, even ones you're not supposed to be able to do. And this was, this was one of them, right? I said, hey, look, you've got this y equals log x curve, which we're not supposed to be able to know how to integrate, but we can still work out the area. If you recall, we did this little trick. We said, hey, you can work out this area over to the y axis and then subtract that from the bigger rectangle that encloses both of them. Um, Sasha, I'll come to your question um, shortly. I will, I will do any of the questions that you have, um, but I will get started with the lesson first and then we'll come to any um, issues that you need clarification with, okay? So, um, the thing that I wanted to call your attention to was I just kind of offhandedly said, ah, oh, this is a function that you're not supposed to be able to integrate. And those of you who have a keen memory might recall that I said, yeah, but if you are a, an extension two student, um, those people who are learning four unit maths, all that fancy stuff, they actually can integrate this. Now, I'm just gonna quickly show you, not for the purposes of copying it down, but just to explain to you that, how it's actually done. Um, this is what it looks like if you try and actually use those fancy techniques. Um, this is what the working will actually pan out to be. Some of you, as you look through it, you might say, I, I actually understand a fair bit of that. Um, this, by the way, this technique that's being used here, this is a simplified way of um, using a technique called integration by parts. You guys know how there's uh, the chain rule and then there's the reverse chain rule. Well, there's a product rule and then this is what we would call the reverse product rule. Now, it's not something that we learn in the, ex in the normal advanced course because it's quite fancy and difficult. But the reason why I'm drawing your attention back to this is that even though an extension two student can integrate y equals log x because they have all this other fancy knowledge, there's some stuff that no matter how you know, advanced you are, no matter what course you're doing, um, no matter if you're like a university level mathematician or something like that, they just can't be integrated in the way that we've been talking about. You can't find what we call an elementary primitive function. So here's an example, right? This function here, um, it looks disgusting, right? It looks terrible. And if you try to integrate, if you hand this to some mathematician, uh, we've actually proved um, that it can't be done. You cannot find a primitive function for this guy. It's literally impossible. Now you might not be surprised to see that because you're like, uh, yeah, it's a gross looking function, right? But even functions that look much less intimidating, like this, um, this also, this second function here, e to the negative x squared, just can't be integrated, which is surprising when you look at what the function is. This is actually a famous function, it's called the Gaussian function. It's really important in statistics, um, which we're gonna to return to again later on. Even though this function looks nice and neat and tidy and not complicated at all, again, you can't integrate it. Um, and it just gets worse and worse. When you have a look at like the real world, and um, when you look at physical situations, um, this equation here, um, which is probably gonna make your head hurt even when you look at it, um, it's a famous equation, the Navier-Stokes equation, because it relates to um, uh, fluids and how they move around. So for example, if you're trying to understand the weather, right, that's um, fluids that are moving, air, viscosity, all the rest, that's what this equation tells you. It's just a garbled mess. You cannot integrate this um, and get something nice and simple at the end. So therefore, what we're gonna deal with today is a piece of knowledge and a skill that will help us deal with all these weird gross looking functions that apparently you can't integrate. We can still find out areas under curves, at least approximately, um, and that's gonna be uh, what we develop using this rule that I'm gonna show you. Now, in order to introduce it, again, I want to call your mind back to our very first lesson on integration, where we talked about areas under curves, and you might remember Mrs. Lees did a bit of a history lesson for us, right? And she talked about Isaac Newton and this guy called Gottfried Leibniz, and basically their idea was this, right? You can approximate the area under a curve using rectangles. And if your rectangles are thin enough, small enough, um, you can get as close to the area as you like. In fact, you can get precisely the area. Now, we're going to employ a trick just like that, um, but we're gonna use a better shape. And you might have uh, gotten a clue for this if you were on time and you saw um, the part of the website that I showed you guys before. We're not gonna use rectangles, we're gonna use trapeziums. Trapeziums, it turns out, um, are much better because you can see they don't have those all the flat edges, we can bend them around into nice, neater shapes that allow us to approximate the area. And it's okay, Yvonne, welcome, no worries. So, let's have a go at this, right? It says, the trapezoidal rule, um, 
and I'm going to give you an example function which we can integrate. I'm going to use this example even though we know how to integrate it so that we can actually get an approximation for what's going on. All right, so let's have a go at this. X squared, um, you can see on the right hand side here, I have um, highlighted a part of the graph, an area under the curve. And it's going to be um, starting here at one and ending over here at three. So let's go ahead and let's integrate this to find the area. Area equals. I'm actually gonna work out this area precisely using integration, and then we're gonna work out how to put trapeziums onto this so that we can approximate the area. Um, and I'm gonna use that um, formula, the trapezoidal rule, um, in the case of areas uh, which I can't do by integration. So, let's form the integral. My uh, lower boundary is gonna start over here at one, so I'm gonna integrate from one all the way up to my upper boundary, which is three, and I'm gonna get x squared dx over here. Now this is pretty simple, right? This is um, actually probably a bit of a relief after all the questions we've been doing recently, which were more complicated than this. So let's go ahead and just integrate it together. I'm going to get x cubed on 3. I'm going to integrate from 1 to 3. And now I'm ready to substitute in these uh, boundaries. So let's see here. 3 cubed on 3, that's 27 on 3. And then 1 cubed on 3 is 1 over 3. So that's 9, take away a third. So I'm getting uh, eight and two thirds, okay? Um, let's have a look. Are you happy with my working? Does it agree with you? Give me a thumbs up if you're okay with that, if you're following and if my numbers look right to you. Fantastic, thanks Yvonne and Abby, much appreciated, okay?